Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Vox animation. Now, the first thing we want to do is I'm gonna right click, create a new composition. I'm going to call mine Vox's background, set this to be 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second, and set the duration to be about four seconds in length. Now, I've actually seen this animation in a lot of the Vox videos, and I thought I'd share with you exactly how it's done. So the next thing we want to do is actually right click, create a new solid. I'm going to set this to be almost a black and then hit OK. Now the next part of this is we actually want to create the boxes that go over our background layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and create a new solid. I'm going to set the color to be this light gray. And then I'm simply just going to draw out my first box. Now with that layer selected, I'm going to come up to layer, down to pre-compose, and I'm going to call this boxes. And this is the composition where we're going to create all of our moving boxes. So now we have our first box actually laid out over our background. We need to add the animation or the wiggle effect to it. So what I'm going to do is come down here to the position by hitting P on the keyboard. And then I'm going to alt click on this stopwatch and I'm simply going to type a wiggle expression of wiggle open bracket two comma 10 close bracket. Now, if we play through this, you can see that we've applied a wiggle effect to that layer. Now, if you wanted to adjust the speed, you can simply come down here and change that first number, or if you wanted to actually change the amount in how far it moves, you can adjust that second number. So now we've got our first shape drawn out. It's just a matter of simply selecting that layer. I can duplicate it and just reposition that second layer around the screen. Now it's just a matter of continuing this process of duplicating those layers and just repositioning them around the screen. Now the key here is to not actually make them all exactly the same. Feel free to resize, reposition and stretch them as much as you want to create this effect. Now the other trick here is to actually overlay the boxes over each other to get that overlapping effect. Now once you feel you've got all your boxes in the right position, we're simply going to come back to our main composition and you can see that the boxes have automatically appeared. Now these boxes are a little bit light, so what we're actually going to do is just come down to the opacity by hitting T on the keyboard and I'm going to drop this layer all the way down to around 20%. Now if we play through this, you can see that we already have our finished effect. Now there's also another effect where they use boxes to actually highlight an image that appears over the background. So in the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make that effect. So I've got this image here of a computer and I'm simply just going to drag it into the middle of my screen here. Then with that layer selected, I'm going to come up to effect, down to perspective and add the drop shadow. I'm then going to reposition the direction. I can extend that distance and I'm going to drop the opacity down very slightly. The other thing I want to do is actually drop the opacity down to around 80% for that layer. And that's just going to make it a little bit more transparent just to blend in with that background. Now, the last thing I want to do with this image is actually want to create a scale keyframe here at the beginning by hitting S on the keyboard. And I'm going to drag this all the way to zero. Then I'm going to move along my timeline here and drag this up to 100%. And if I play through that, you can see we've got a simple scale animation. So if I select both those keyframes and right click, I can now make them easy ease. And just to soften out that animation even more, I'm going to come over here to the graph editor and I want to drag in on my beginning point here and I want to drag in on my end point. And that's going to create a really nice smooth animation for that layer. Now it's just a matter of copying those two keyframes and pasting them at the end of my animation. Then if I right click on those keyframes, I can come down to keyframe assist and select time reverse keyframes. And that's simply going to reverse that animation. Now the next part is I want to put some colored boxes that appear over that image. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my shape layer. You can adjust the color to whatever you like and I'm going to draw out my first shape here. Now you can just reposition your shape to cover whatever you like but then I'm going to select that layer and hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. And I'm going to drop this down to around 50%. 
And again, that's just going to help sell the overall finished effect. So I'm going to drag this layer in so it appears after my image. And I simply want to create a keyframe for the position here at the start. I'm going to move along slightly on the timeline here and create another position. And I want to drag it over so at the end of it lines up with that image. Then I'm going to move along my timeline even further and drag this across. Now, if I come back to my original keyframe, I can do the same by dragging it off the screen. Now, if we play through this, you can see a little problem has occurred. You can see that in the middle, the animation actually appears to bounce. Now, this is a problem actually with After Effects as it tries to auto animate between two keyframes. Now to solve this, what we do is we actually select all those keyframes. I can right click, come down to the keyframe interpolation, and I want to change the spatial interpolation to be linear. And that's basically going to stop After Effects from animating in between those two keyframes. Now it's just a matter of right clicking on all those keyframes again, coming down to keyframe assist and making them all easy ease. Now again, to soften out that animation, we're going to come over to the graph editor and I can drag in on these points here. And also on these end points. And that's going to create a really nice soft animation for that layer. Now we finish that first layer, it's just a matter of simply duplicating that layer. I'm then going to bring up all the position keyframes and I want to select all of them and make sure my playhead is lined up over one of those keyframes, then I can move that entire animation down so it covers the middle of my image. Now the other thing I can do here is I can actually stretch out that shape to cover up a larger section. Now with that layer selected, I'm going to come up here and actually change the color to something a little darker, but this can be whatever you like, and then hit OK. So now that we have our two layers finished, it's just a matter of duplicating it one last time and just repeating that process. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, I'm going to drag it down. I can then reposition it here. You can then change the color to be whatever you like and then hit OK. Now at the moment, all of our layers are coming in at the same time and we want to basically stagger them. So what we're going to do is actually offset some of these layers by dragging them across like this. And the other thing we want to do is actually move some of these keyframes and that's basically going to change the speed at which that animation is going to play out. Now that's up to you and personal preference on how you actually want that to animate, but the more random it is, the better the results. Now one last thing we can do here is turn on motion blur for that composition and also for those layers. And if we play through, you can see we now have our finished effect. So there you go guys, that's how you create this effect. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more After Effects tutorials over at flatbackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.